All right, so we didn't finish getting the head off on the last video, so we'll try and finish now. We've cut through most of the tissue, and it's helpful if you have another person to hold it. And then you just take the head and you twist it. You can hear it pop. Keep twisting. Somebody else is stabilizing the carcass. That way it comes away. You can just work it free, but it's easier to just twist and then pull. Now that's the head away. Now we can begin cutting up the meat. So, inside we'll start with the tenderloin. This is the tenderloin. Um, deer and things have this too, so you don't want to miss out on this. It's the most tender part of the pig or the deer or elk or whatever it is you have. So you're just you're cutting it. It's stuck on the backbone here. So you're just cutting it away as close to the bone as you can get so you don't miss out on it and lose meat. There's not a lot, a lot of meat on an animal when you take it down to meat versus bone ratio anyway. So that's a tenderloin. And you can just cut that up and fry that. Very nice piece of meat, especially on this young animal. Most of the time, Cooney Coonies um, and other mini pigs, you're growing out to a year and a half. But because we butchered early, the meat's going to be really, really tender. You can butcher a pig any time. Um, they're edible from day one. So any time you need to or want to, you can take out a pig. And there's the other tenderloin. Okay, so this... Let's get the shoulder, shoulder first, actually. Here's your shoulder. It's not got a joint or anything like you'd think. It doesn't... There's just a blade right here, okay? And it's only stuck on the carcass by fat and muscle. So you're looking for the edge of that, and you work the thing, and you can feel it working in there. Now, we're cutting this up the way nobody else does. But this, this works for us. It works particularly well for women. Um... There's not a lot of sawing of bones involved uh, and cutting things apart that are difficult to get apart. And it gets a, a nice cut up animal that's very usable and it's very easy to do. So we've got a little bit into the shoulder blade there, which is why we're having difficulty. Get down you got on that, then try to get back off of it. It's supposed to be rounded. We cut it off. Okay, so that's this cartilage. So just go ahead and cut the meat with that. I'm cutting off some of the neck meat at the same time. Um, it's just the way I do it. Everybody can do it different. Find your groove. That's just cutting the shoulder off. Don't drop it in your pile if it's down below there. That's part of the neck meat. And we'll set that by. And that makes it easier to get the bacon off. Let's cut the sh other shoulder off. Kind of work it, and we're right in there, the right spot. Proceed ahead. If you find you've gotten off track, just try to get back on track. Put the shoulder away. Okay. Intermittently rinse your hands so you don't get blood on the fat. Just makes it look nicer. So because this isn't part of the ham, we're gonna just go ahead and cut it off with the bacon for right now. Later on you trim up and square the bacon. The bacon is all of this belly meat here, all the way around the pig, 
to where the loin is. Your loin's right here. So let's go ahead and these are the these are the uh, hams. So you're basically trying to um, find your center line there. You're lining it up with the hole up here. This is where the tail was, and it's pretty much right in the center is where his backbone is. You're kind of stabbing in the dark to begin with. But once you find it, kind of cut down until you find the actual center. There we've got it. Okay. That's the center line right here. So on either side of that is a loin. Or if you want to use a different term, back strap. We don't do all the cuts with the chops and stuff like that. We just cut the loin off and that gets most of your meat far easier. So you're just kind of scoring along the bone. You're doing this all the way down. You're as close to the spine as you can be and then scoring it off of the top part of the ribs. And you do get into the neck doing this, but I just do it anyway. Just go ahead and follow it all the way up. Um, and we just fry it up as, as little steaks. Okay. And see how it's just kind of stuck on there in like a little line of meat? So you just peel that away because you're not going to want that fat on your your steaks. And you can do that on the table as well if you choose. Whenever, wherever you have the most resistance is where you want to do something because it helps you pull it away. If you have no resistance at all, then it's more difficult to cut it away. So that's one of the loins away. It's not huge, but it serves for a small family. Okay, back to the bacon. So this is the back fat. That'll get trimmed off of the bacon. I just put it all on there for now. This is your second most high quality fat on the pig. Okay, so you're... What the bacon is, is it's the rib meat, okay? So you're just curving along, glancing off the ribs as you go. Hoping that's not a bear the dogs are barking at in the background. Curving down. All the way. It's preferable if you have somebody to help you hold it because don't drop the bacon. Okay? That's not all bacon that gets squared away. But you see you got your fat and your your muscle intertwined. So lay that by. Okay, that's half your pig done. Rib and belly together is bacon. And we do the same thing on this side. Is on the other. And we're not doing it perfect and we're not uh, hired butchers so it's not going to be perfect and that's okay. We're just doing this for our home meat. And meat eats no matter if it looks messy or not. So this one we're going to leave the loin on the bacon. You, there's a bacon you can do that where the loin is on there and it's rolled bacon. We will show you in a later video. Hopefully. So again, you're scoring along the ribs. Try to get as much meat off as you can because that's your bacon. You don't want to lose it to your rib meat. See, there's, there's where the loin's attached. There's the bacon. Okay. 
got to be pretty, it just has to be functional. Of course, there's many people better at this than me, but this is just my way of doing it. It comes out for our family. This is the part where you pray the bacon does not fall on the ground. Might not be a bad idea to have a tarp or something. And I'm just I'm taking more than the bacon here. I'm just going ahead and finishing off the back fat because that's going to be rendered. Let me square it up later. Having a couple of plastic tubs, their food grade is really, really handy for the home butcher. Okay, so what I do next, in a normal professional thing, they would have cut all the way down the center of the carcass, and this and that and the other is not needed. What I do is take this and just cleave along the edge of the ribs. Makes a nice cut. This is your ribs. Fresh ribs are super excellent. Okay, there's your ribs. Plenty of meat and fat still on to make them good. And you take, you're going to have a right side and a wrong side when doing a carcass. And, uh, when you're doing it by yourself, it, you're going to have to do either side. So, so you get used to it. And this whole thing takes me, one person, about an hour and a half. And that's with cleanup. So, it can be pretty speedy. Getting a little bit messy because we're on the throat area there. There we go. Okay. We always chill it down and do cut and wrap the next day, or or even the day after that. Really cold refrigerator. Or you can even do it on ice and a. This is the neck. If you want to have a neck roast, you can salvage that. Um, what we do is we cut this neck off and then we cut these in about six or seven inch pieces and those are our um, soup bones. So the neck you can either use as a roast or can cut pieces off of it to do to stew meat. Either way. Whenever you're doing this you can find the um, joints on the spine, it's easier for you. Just cut away all that. That's got the esophagus a little bit still in there. Clean that all up. Okay. So, this does make shards of bone when you hit that with the cleaver. So try not to cut yourself. But for women, it's easier for us to do that than it is to, uh, so. Unless you're particularly good with so. Or not. Now we'll just... See, once you hit the right spot, that just pops apart. If you're in the wrong spot, it doesn't. Okay. So now we're just down to uh, cutting your hands apart. Okay. Again, you can do this with a saw. But this is 
just as easier, easier. Tension on the carcass. Helps you to clear it away. This is called the ham swing. <laughs> Look okay. out. <laughs> so only one more thing to do on the base cuts we do. And you have a pig that's ready to uh, chill. So I'm going to take and take the foot off. It's different on the back than the front. The back is uh, on all large animals is double jointed. So you find the right joint in there. More cable. When you're doing this, you might want to make sure that uh, you wear some clothing that you're going to not mind having greasy because you get a lot of grease out of these kind of animals. Okay, so you're scoring it. Near, move the joint back and forth to see where you think the joint is. Then you're scoring it so that you can again pop it out. You're working with the the joints as much as you can. Yeah, you can just take out a saw and saw that off of there. But again, it's difficult to saw. So, one way I do is use this as a edge of the table and bend the leg backward the way it doesn't go. And that's the leg away, foot away. That's awful. So then this is the front foot. The front foot is a little bit different. You can score that all the way. Pair it. Work the joint so you know where it is. Very slippery because of the fat. People talk down Cooney Coonies, but they are a wonderful meat pig. They breed easily, the Cooney Cooney crosses particularly, which is what we have. And you've got lard, which is gaining in popularity. You might have to turn it and twist it around and keep looking for the... There you can see this the little hole there, and that's your joint. You're trying to open that up and remove the connective tissue so that you can pop it free. Here we go. And you can pop it the other way or you can just kind of give it a twist. It doesn't come away. Work it again with the knife. Sometimes it's easier to notice. Okay, that's cutting up a pig. Next time is cut and wrap. <laughs>